Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this extra large hot pad using the twisted pull pattern. I made myself a cheat sheet so I would know exactly how many half square triangles I would need and it just makes laying it out later on a lot easier if you have a diagram. I have eight half square triangles with light on one side and the blue on the other and then I needed four with the black and the light. I used the same blue for my backing as I did in the front for the half square triangles and then I found this black grunge scrap that I had and I thought it would be perfect for the binding. Then I have two layers of cotton batting. Now it's time to lay out my pattern and it makes it a lot easier if you have a little guide to follow along so I can just refer to that. To keep things a little bit more organized when I'm sewing my patchwork pieces together, I use um, my clips. So one row will be red clips, one row will be purple clips and pink and yellow and so forth. That way I know which blocks go to which row. Now I clip my pieces together because I know I need to sew on the right hand side. That way I just keep things a little bit more organized. And of course I'm filming and I put it on the wrong spot, but I fixed it. Now it's time to sew them together. So I'm going to sew it on the right hand side and then I just put my clip on the top piece again just so I know this is the top. That way I don't accidentally get them turned around later on when I'm sewing my rows together. Just a little tip that I figured out to keep things a little bit more organized and together because too many times I've sewn stuff together and it was wrong and then I had to unpick it and I hate unpicking things, which I'm sure everyone does. And now it's just time to sew on the last blocks for each row. Double check on your diagram or just double check before you do it. And then when I iron them, I iron to the side, but I make sure that I do one row, I iron to the left, and the next row, I iron to the right, and vice versa. That way I can nest my seams when it comes time to sewing them together, and you just get a nice smoother finish, and you want those points to line up nicely. Then I just flip my top row down, and I make sure that my seams are nesting nicely, that one is going to the left and one is going to the right. That way you're going to get a nice point. And then I put a pin right inside the seam allowance there so that it can't shift and I don't remove that pin until my needle is on the other side of the seam allowance because I removed my pins too soon and then my seams don't line up. Uh, trust me, my first quilt shows all of these mistakes that I made. Maybe one day I'll do a video on all the mistakes I made on that quilt. Because this is a small project, I pinned all my rows together at once, but if it was a large quilt, I would only do it row by row. It would be just too much if you did this on a big quilt. But yeah, and I just double check to make sure that my corners and my points all line up before I continue. And it's time to give everything a good press. And this is where you want to make sure that you give it a really good press, that it's nice and flat, because it'll make the quilting part a lot easier. Now I'm cutting the strips for the binding. I do my binding at two and a half inches wide. That's just the width I like. And I need more than width of fabric, so I'm just joining two pieces together by laying them right sides together. And then you want to sew from outside corner to outside corner. And then we sew it together and once that's done and then we flip it over and we'll have a nice long continuous piece. Here I'm just trimming off. You want to cut about a quarter inch away from the edges and then trim off those dog ears. Anytime I join binding strips together I like to iron that seam open and then you just fold the whole strip in half and give it a good press. Now it's time to make the quilt sandwich. So you take your backing piece and lay it wrong side up and then put your two pieces of batting on top. Make sure everything's nice and smooth, no wrinkles in there. And then put your top on there. Make sure that's all nice and smooth. The pins that I'm using for my pin basting I got from Fat Quarter Shop. I'll link them down below. They have a nice little curve on them. They are perfect for this. I absolutely love it. And then I'm deciding where I'm going to do my quilting to try to not put too many pins in that area so I don't have to keep moving pins while I'm quilting. The quilting goes a lot faster if you're not constantly stopping to remove pins, but sometimes it's unavoidable and you just have to remove them so that you can continue with your quilting. And here I'm just going a quarter inch away from my seam. It's called the Echo. I don't like stitching in the ditch because if your seams aren't 100% accurate, it will show a lot more. And sewing a straight line is a lot harder than you would think. So if you kind of jump out of the ditch, then it's going to be very visible. And here I'm just trimming it up by cutting off all the excess on the sides. And I use my six and a half inch ruler here to make sure that my corners are nice and square. And now it's just time to sew on the binding. I make sure I even leave a nice tail so that I can join my binding strips later. I am not the best at binding yet, so I'm not very qualified at teaching how to do this, but I am going to leave some links in the description box below on tutorials that I watched that really helped me. There are some great tutorials that show you like in-depth, step-by-step, and it just makes it so much easier to learn. I really appreciate all the work that people have put into teaching me how to do this. It has definitely helped me with my binding, that's for sure. I like to iron my binding out so it just looks a little bit crisper. And the same thing in the back, when I fold it over, I give it another little press and then put a few clips in. It helps a lot too with holding everything in place. For my corners, I like to use a pin to just kind of push the fabric all the way to the end there. I feel like I can get a better 45 degree angle there so that that mitered corner looks much nicer. That was a trick that I learned from one of the binding tutorials that I watched. Unfortunately, I can't remember which one. 
Um, hopefully I added it to the list up in the description. But there you can see how nice that corner is. And then you just want to repeat the steps on all four corners and then you are ready to sew it down. I'm going to do the stitch in the ditch from the front for my first time. Hopefully it works out. I have my walking foot on. It just makes things a lot easier when you're sewing through multiple layers. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I use my walking foot for quilting as well. I didn't have one before and I did do some of this stuff without it and it does work, but trust me, a walking foot is a good investment. And there, now it's all done. I actually really like how it turned out and I used a black thread so on the back binding my stitching isn't 100% straight, but that's okay with me. Mm -hmm.